Welcome to Blog to Your Talent. This is lesson 23, and we are on the topic of how to write about your talent in a blog. And what you want to do is, when you're writing about your talent in one particular post, is you want to focus on one particular topic, one point. You want to be making one point, one major point in your blog post. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because um, in some situations, you're going to be in a workshop, maybe with someone more advanced, um, taking a, a workshop with a mentor, and in that workshop, you might learn three very important things, maybe five important things, depending on how long it is. Lots of juicy information. Now, the temptation is to rush home, write about that experience, which is what I want you to do, but go on and on and on with this long-running essay about three or four or five points that you've learned in that workshop. I do not want you to do that. No. You're going to lose you, your reader. You're going to lose your reader. Mm -hmm. you're, yes, write about all three of those main points or five main points that you learned in that workshop. But I want you to separate each of those points into a separate blog post. And it's going to be easier to find that specific topic or keyword later, too. Remember the Google, uh, not Google, but your own search that you have on your blog. If you have to remember one particular practice that you wanted to go back and brush up on and you knew you did a blog post, you don't want to have to sort through an entire post and have that one thing in it inserted right in the middle of the blog post. That's just going to take you too much time. So you want to be able to go straight to the post that was just dealing with that one practice that you wanted to go back and review. Right. So really, you're doing your readers a big favor by compartmentalizing each point into separate blog posts. Because remember, when when someone comes to your website and if you're hoping that they read all three of those main points from the workshop experience you had that afternoon, they can do that. They can just keep scrolling through and reading that. But if they don't want to do that, and especially later on when people are going to search on just one keyword within your blog for a particular topic that you, you wanted to explain and where the other points aren't relevant to it, then you're going to be doing them a huge favor. So I want you to train yourself to think like that. You don't want to dump all the information you had mm -hmm. into one post. You want to have one point per post. Now, this brings up also the fact that uh, uh, to, to, to have a point, you have to know what the point is. And mm -hmm. that's where it's going to fall a bit of a burden on you. When you go to a workshop, there are a lot of things you're going to find out. But not everything is worthy to write about in a blog post. So there's going to be some interpretation on your end as to what's an important point to, to write about. So in the same vein of looking for what is important, I want you to also start thinking about uh, uh, what kind of books and information would be relevant for you to read about. Um, that eventually would be interesting to, to blog about. Mm -hmm. So if you just go to Amazon and you just browse around for books, there's going to be so much information, you're not going to have any directions to, to what to do. So in this exercise for this lesson, I want you to write eight questions that you think would be relevant for you to ask um, uh, from someone who's read a book to see if, it's, if, it's, if it meets your needs. So I want you to write down eight questions that ha would help you decide whether or not you should borrow the book from the library or buy, buy it used from Amazon so you, so you are ready. Eight questions about that book? Eight questions you would want to know about the book before the you actually author. buy it. Okay, so I, I'm looking at a book and I think I'm thinking about buying this book, but I want to know if it's going to answer everything that I want to know. So, so you would like me to come up with eight questions about that book. Right, and one yeah, of the questions could be, is this, for, uh, is this a book that only advanced mm -hmm. uh, experts could use? Okay. And then, and then if you're not that far ahead, you don't want to buy a very complicated yeah. book that, yes, it might be helpful to you in three, four years from now, but it's yeah. so advanced. And, and a lot of you uh, know when you go even to like Wikipedia, for example, right. you'll find an article on some complicated chemistry explanation mm -hmm. uh, 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 related to your talent, but it's so over your head that you really can't make any use of it yet. Yeah, right. So that's the same thing. You're going to, maybe some of those questions might be, is this something that I could use as a beginner? And if mm -hmm. you were to ask a friend and a friend says, no, you can't, well then save your money 
and save it for a book that you could not, use. It's kind of like if your parent came home from the library and there's a big stack of books and in your mind, you're doing this all the time in your mind. You've got a whole bunch to choose from. So in your mind you're thinking, well, is this going to be able to interest me? That's a question related to, is it, gonna, is it close enough to my talent or is it way off, even if there's just a keyword that's similar to my own keyword for my talent. So it's kind of the, the, the questions that you get in your head when you look at a book that just came in a big stack. Which one of these is going to be interesting? So you just focus in on one book and ask those questions. Well, a, a good example, a, I'm thinking here of uh, one of our sons who who is trying to develop uh, videography skills to support his, his overall talent. It's not his ex exclusive talent, but it's part mm -hmm. of the skill set he's trying to develop. And there's a lot of books on, on filming and, and mm -hmm. videography. And uh, one, one of the uh, points he was trying to develop for himself, one of the skills was how to uh, develop storyboards before you film, which he discovered over time it's better to start off with a storyboard before you start filming. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there's also a lot of books out there that are designed for big films, big projects, lots of people, which at his beginner stage, he can't even begin to afford. He doesn't have a crew of people yet. He doesn't have a crew of people. <laughs> And so the information that's in there is not helpful to him as a beginner. So we, he had to narrow down the books down to the ones that would be relevant to him as right. a one person with a camera. So when you actually search for information, you can put keywords that just like, um, you know, um, personal digital camera yeah. and, um, and video, just some keywords that he used in order to find the books that were relevant. In fact, we did find one that was excellent, someone done by who worked at Disney. Uh, in the early years explaining how they would go through concepts for making uh, storyboards but the way it was written was perfect for the amateur videographer who didn't have to have crews of people working for him mm. so that's what we got so I want you to come up with those kind of informations for example that says is this something I could apply right now today to my skill level so come up with eight questions that you would ask um, someone who's read the book to find out is this something that could apply to me and, and enlist an older sibling or your parent to help you come up with the questions if you're kind of getting stuck on a few. So get someone else's help, too. All right. <laughs> Happy Talent Journey. We will see you on the next lesson. Okay, once you have your library thing established, you have a few books, you might have an Amazon account with some, a wish list of books that you like. You may um, have plans uh, to go to the library and look at books there. You, you don't necessarily want to um, read every single book from front to, from cover to end. So what do you, what would you suggest people, or what would you look for in a book? What kind of um, questions would you I, I look for, I, I like to know where the um, reference pictures are actually good quality and are relevant to the subject at hand. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, like there's this one jewelry design book, really good, except the pictures, it just have random little pictures nothing to do with what it's talking about. So I'd want to know that the pictures are good. I also want to know that the um, that the author has experience and knows what he's talking about, okay. not just feeding me false information. Okay. So you know, <coughs> hope that the person has some type yeah. of credentials, experience, doesn't yeah. have to have a, a master's degree in that area, but at least he's been working yeah. on. And also, um, preferably if he's uh, he or she has written several other books, then I know, okay, this person knows how to write. It also made to take a look at the first few pages, the introduction, um, to see if their writing is, will actually make sense and not just all jumbled with bad grammar and so on. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, and also to see if it's engaging enough. Is it going to be more text book type of a book? Yeah. Or sometimes you want uh, more anecdotal stories that talk about yeah. know, the person's yes. experience. So, okay, thank you. Sure.